Hey, man, like... I'm a guy who likes to work on my car. I like to take it apart and put it back together. Crazy, man. What makes a man do this? Hi, thanks for taking the time to have a look at this video. It's the second one in my series and I'm hoping to make this a long-term platform to look at photography in various forms, in the art world, journalistic and documentary. So I hope you'll join me, like, subscribe. As is the case with everyone else in the world, I've been fascinated by the Ukraine war and particularly I've been looking at imagery that's come out of this particular conflict. What's been interesting is how some images have stood out from the mass of imagery that we see in social media, newspapers, magazines. And what I'm hoping to do is break down those, um, the incidents that led to those images as best I can to give a bit of insight as to how the photographers perhaps were thinking, how they react within that situation and how they produce images that really sing and communicate what everyone else in the world is thinking. So there's one particular event I think would be useful to start in, I think, the yeah, 7th of March, a lady called Olina Carrillo, a 52-year-old teacher, uh, was in an apartment when a bomb hit and she got injured and at that time three photographers were cruising around in a car and happened upon the scene. So all three of them took really, really strong imagery and I think that's why it will be a, a very good example to focus on to show how photographers see in different ways and how they can cover an event in a way that brings different insights and various newspapers or outlets pick up these images and can use them in a way that actually suits the story or the angle that they are pursuing. So I think I'm going to start with that instance so you can follow through with me. After that I'm going to look at different events, um, different photographers and the images that go with those incidents. So follow me through. The images of Orlina Carrillo dominating the covers of magazines and newspapers around the world. Even though the content of these images is obviously emotionally charged, I'm going to be looking at them more closely with the dispassionate approach of a picture editor. I'm starting with Wolfgang Schwann's image. He moves his images through Getty. You can see he's gone for a close-up. He's probably used a 35 to 50, gone in really close, so you can see the detail. His image on the cover of a lot of magazines and newspapers. In this version, I've lifted the lighting a bit so you can see the detail better. What he's got is you know, the bandages with blood stains, teeth with blood on it. In the background, you can see a bombed out building with rubble on the left hand side. So he's produced a story within a very close up image. When you look closely at her eyes, you can see that glazed look that comes from intense shock and the incomprehension of how her life has come to this point. This is a wider shot that he took, probably stepping back. You can see more detail and it's a strong image, but not as impactful as the first one. Most photographers in these kind of really volatile situations will be using two cameras and ideally two high quality zoom lenses. So they don't have to change lenses or think too hard, they either pick up the wide angle or they pick up the camera with the slightly telephoto, say 80, 70 to 1, uh, 210 
and the wide angle probably 18 to 70. So then you've covered from 18 millimeters super wide or 21 and then your other lens take you, takes you from 70 millimeters to 210. So you're covering a real wide spectrum of shots. Justin Yao from SEPA, he's gone a little wider, he's stepped back. She's giving a gesture which says, how can this be? Her life was normal a few days ago and now she's in this state. It gives the picture editor an opportunity to provide an image to his editors to say, here's an image which you can use to sum up the whole situation as it is now in Ukraine and the horror experienced by this individual person. You can see the depth of field is very low. He's, it's probably um, 4.5, the light is going down and the background is completely out of focus which draws your eye into the focused area not that this image needs any further kind of manipulation to make it strong. New York Post, mirror, they cropped out the hand, which is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. The third photographer in this series of images of Alina is Aris Mezinus. And she works for AP. She's the chief photographer in Athens, Greece. And they, for something like this, they pull in the... A, AP would have pulled in this kind of best of the best. So they get the strongest coverage. This image was taken at a different point in the, in the story. Because you can see the bandages on the head aren't, aren't on. But, and the background is not as interesting. So... But what really makes this image strong is that you can see that vacant look in her eye and the desperation and horror of, of the trauma. And the simplified two bandages allow one to go in closer. It's a backlit image, so she would have exposed for the foreground. Um, her camera might, might have done it for her, but otherwise she would have thought it through because that highlight would have, in a, uh, if it was on something like program, it might have made the, for, uh, the facial detail go into a shadow. The fact that the background is blurred allows one to focus again on the face. So, very strong. You can see here it was used in a montage situation. Someone's taken the background which is very dramatic. I don't think it was even the same building and they've put her face on the front. Just that horror that her world has completely transformed by, by the war. This is a really interesting scenario. I'm looking at um, New York Times photographer Lindsay Adario. She's won the Pulitzer and she's got an amazing work. So I want to look at this scene. If you're sensitive to violent and disturbing scenes, then this isn't one to, to watch. Now, this footage taken by Andriy Dubchak. He's a, a local, as far as I know, he's a local guy working with Lindsay as a security advisor. And he also does freelance um, photography and videography. This is this is his footage taken. Uh, that's filling the screen now. I'm down in that corner, and yeah, this is this is the lead up to one of the most impactful photographs that have been taken during this war. Let's. I'm going to let it run. The video run. And then I'll, I'll come back and talk about it. Okay, let's just watch it. This <laughs>
200 у озера, мирное население, вами. Okay, I'll stop it there. They were 30 meters from where this bomb blast went off. Uh, it could have been a, a mortar round, I think. And <clears throat> you can see 30 meters is really nothing. So when when something like ha that happens, you can see the, the videographer falls over and it's, it's complete mayhem. The noise levels are huge. The, the fear levels go from zero to 120 seconds or one second, I should say. So yeah, let's have a look from the beginning again and I'll stop and break it down. Now you can see that there's pandemonium. They don't know whether they've been hit, if anyone's hurt, and it's chaos. You could just imagine the fear at that moment because you don't know whether the walls are going to come crumbling down, the missile um, or mortar around hit this structure. But what you do know, you start, you start getting clarity and you start thinking, okay, can I go? Can I go? This is, I've survived, I'm fine, and now what can I do next? Then you can see Lindsay coming through, that's her, and she's got her camera to her face. Let me show you, that's a shot. So she's come straight out of that scene, camera up, ready, and that's the only way you're going to get a decent shot because that kind of intensity and action only lasts for a split second. So if you stand around thinking that you're going to kind of work out what to do next, then you're too late. So let me go back to that scene. So this is Lindsay now, and you'll see her security advisor tells her to stop. Um, don't run because he doesn't know at this stage whether it's safe, whether there's, uh, it, was a, it could have been a hand grenade thrown by Russian troops. So let's have a look a bit further. She says she's coming out and she can see that in the distance here, somewhere here, the there's been, someone's got hit, and as it turns out, it's a family of four that were killed. At the moment, everything is still in chaos. She wants to go. The security advisor is saying, don't go, don't go, and he's checking things out first. But it's, it's always a real toss-up in those situations because the photographer wants to be there, but also doesn't want to get hurt. So they kind of got to work together in unison because he's got to give her as much leeway as possible to get the shot without putting her in danger. So you'll see it doesn't, it's really less than a second, a second or two maybe before he says, okay, go. And then you can already see his hands are getting uh, steadier and people are going to check. On the, on the injured, but in this case, dead. And it's interesting, I'm just gonna go back to this point here. That guy running in the background, and the person you saw talking right at the beginning of the, the frame, he's lying, he's been blown from probably about four meters. And you can see here, He's dragging that chap, and yeah, actually here's Lindsay taking that picture. And it's, it's an interesting, I mean, that's quite, to get that picture with all that smoke 
and drama happening. That would be an amazing photograph if she could be right there. But she chooses to say why stay wisely because who knows if there were Russian troops across the road, then she would be a goner. So she stayed in the doorway, and that probably wasn't a shot because she had all this, these bars, in, the the bars in the um, in the way. But she also then had a choice, and these things go through your brain as you're in that situation. You kind of, your if you worried about too much about what could have happened, then you're going to lose the moment. So you have to then say, okay, is that the shot? Or do I look across the road to where the the family has been hit? Now, following that guy would probably make a very dramatic shot. But then she's working for all the New York Times and she has to keep in mind what the meta-narrative is at any stage within the war. And at this stage, the she everyone, all news um, outlets, wanted to prove that the Russians are bombing and attacking civilians. So that is the photograph that she chooses to go for because that's what is needed at this particular point. So she moves, she doesn't go there, she moves out and as soon as her, her security advisor allows her, she heads off across the road. So that's that's good thinking because if you can see injured civilians, that's telling the story. Um, it sounds callous, but in that moment you have to be thinking what are you what are you there for? Let's have a look now at Lindsay's image on the front page of the New York Times. There you can see the editors have used it really big, very strong. In this, below the main image, is a shot of, uh, looks like a soldier running across from the building that they were all in before the bomb blast hit. I'm going to move to a better resolution image of the, of the main picture. In the background, this structure is where Lindsay and her security advisor were standing when the mortar round went off. The person that we saw speaking right at the beginning of the footage, he was standing here and then got blown probably about four meters backwards. There are a lot of elements in this image that make it strong. Let's work our way around. In the left hand corner you've got a soldier, a, st a monument of a soldier and the flag, so it brings in a sense of history, a sense of war. You have this chap, which is I mean, such a moment, it has a Cartier-Bresson feel almost. There's a famous image that Cartier-Bresson took of a, a man in Paris walking across or jumping across a, a puddle of water, and she's caught him in exactly the same position. And it looks like he's completely oblivious to what's going on next to him. This guy, he's, you can read what he, he's kind of thinking, or in this case, probably not thinking, just horrified by what he's looking at. He, you know, she, she's got caught the medics or other army personnel checking, checking the bodies. But then when you move your eye in, they, the family's wearing puffy jackets, which one might have worn if you were going on a holiday, protecting yourself for cold weather. They've got little suitcases. So the details are what really make this image incredibly strong. She's filled, if you look at the frame, she's filled the frame with information. And in that scenario after you've just had a bomb blast right, ne right near you. You have to think very, very clearly to get an image like this and to bring all the elements together, to have the presence of mind to wait for that guy to walk, step off the curb. Yeah.
Nothing more to be said there, I think. Horrific, but a winner. I saw a television interview with Lindsay in which the anchor was asking her, was this image justified? And she replied, well, she said it was important to show how this photograph had revealed to the world that the Russians were target, targeting civilians. In my mind, that's a fairly weak question from the anchor. War is horrific, so if one is going to send photojournalists to cover a war, then you're going to have to expect to see the brutality of war. Otherwise, what is the point? The picture editor of each publication can choose which images they want to show to their audience. But I don't think the photojournalist should be editing out in the field which images are suitable and which ones aren't. In this particular case, Lindsay was really backed up by her picture editors and they ran this on the front cover. These are two images from a different event. This is uh, refugees leaving Kyiv. What I really, what I think these show, and I'll show a few images later on, are, is how she actually is so aware of color and uses it, in this case, to frame the image. This child in the foreground, waving goodbye possibly to her father. This child looking terrified with his teddy bear, and the mother looks like a mother figure in the background. Same thing here, very strong use of color. I just want to emphasize Lindsay's eye for color and light. These images weren't taken in Ukraine, but they give you an idea of how she's seeing the world. Blues before, yellow and orange in this case, muted greens and yellows, blues and greens. There's a reason why one hasn't seen many images come out of this war from freelancers because it is such a volatile, violent situation that when these organizations move in, they don't move in with just one or two staff members. They move in with a full backup. So they will have fixes, they'll have security people, they will have um, admin people based in Kyiv or wherever the, the center is. It's so important for photojournalists to have a real strong backup system. So when they want to go out and look for events, they've got fixes, they've got people on the ground who will suggest where they can go and what they can see at that particular point. And then when they have the images, they've got a whole backup system that can support them, get the images out, and they can move on. Whereas a freelancer who just arrives on their own in Kyiv, they have to think about all the details. They have to track down the story. They have to try translate from the news, local news feeds, to find out what's going on. And they have no security, no backup they're at a real disadvantage compared to the big guys. So that's why you'll normally see images from AP, Reuters, AFP, um, New York Times, and all the major outlets. But the bigger the organization that is backing you, the more chance you have of getting decent images. Moving on to Getty photographer, Daniel Barahulak. He's won two Pulitzers, and he contributes fairly often to the New York Times. So looking at this image, it's a really minimalistic image. You've got a stairway, a rusted stairway coming down from the right. You've got your light source on the left, shining onto the Ukrainian soldier. And you've got this dog looking out the window, which adds a little spark to the image. It provides a, a humorous aspect to a very serious situation. If you look here again, similarly artistic feel, abstract wall, hole in the middle, 
if one just kind of scrunches up your eyes a little bit, you can see the, the shapes of the image. But in this case, you've got a soldier probably in training running through this gap in the wall. Here as well, not a very interesting scene, but what really draws one's attention, it's a suburban scene, but what he's done is put the, well, he's taken the photograph as the soldier moves past this light steel door. So what it does, it draws one's eyes completely into the center of the frame and you can focus on the soldier. It's a warfare photograph, but giving you insight into how the sub suburbs now look after weeks of war. This is one of the strongest images that I've seen out of Ukraine where the photographer has been embedded with a unit and that's a very strong action shot. Here again you've got a trench scene. His eye and the way he's photographed this image allows a diminishing perspective as you look towards the back and the center. But then your eye shifts back again and has a look at this guy on the left. The actual moment isn't that exciting. It's a, a lull after or before the next storm. But what you're seeing is these soldiers just take a breath and you can feel their exhaustion and the fact they've experienced so much trauma gives a real stillness to this image. What, if one goes in a bit closer, what Daniel, he's run it through a post-production program that's kind of, it, it adds a painterly finish. I'm not sure I'd choose this, but the advantage is it brings up real contrast so you can see detail in all the faces and it's, it's very vivid. But for me, there's just a bit too much of post-production going on. There are three major new services uh, Associated Press, AP, Reuters, and Agence France Press, AFP. And they tend to move into a situation like this with a team of photographers and backup people who will get the images out, caption, and send. So it's been interesting looking at those three and, and who's, as they call in in the wire service, it's, it's called play, who wins the play. And that translates into whose images are being used the most. And you can gauge who's winning. At the moment, uh, I would say AP is really winning. They've got some really good photographers. I'm going to focus on a few photographs and a few photographers from each agency but in my mind the AP photographers have really shone during this war. I'll start with a Associated Press AP um, and with the chief photographer of Spain and Portugal Emilio Morinati He's, um, he was won Pulitzers and World Press Prizes and he had his, um, his left leg blown off during a blast in Afghanistan in 2009. But it's remarkable that he's able to produce images like this, having that injury. This image, perfect. He's got this guy gesturing, this woman dressed up as if she's going to a ball and this crowd of people within this kind of brutal bridge structure. That's enormously strong image. Probably similar to the Olena images. Good moment.
This is also AP photographer Evgeny Mololetka. I think I crucify most of these photographers' names, but here we go. This image also has been used all over the place. You know, even if you're not a woman and not a pregnant woman, you can feel what it must be like and the vulnerability of her situation. So this is a, a really strong image that's got a lot of play, front page of the New York Times. All over the place. Front page of the uh, Daily Telegraph. She's, she's done some really um, strong work. I mean, that's very simple, structured image, but blood splats of the, this man's son. So it brings the grieving process home really vividly. And this is a bit of, yeah, and in, it's always a useful touch to bring in just a little bit of humor in a way. You know, there's, there's nothing funny about the situation, but just the fact she's wearing this teddy bear um, pajamas, people can relate to that detail. And seeing how the, the apartment block is completely destroyed and she's just getting out, probably just woke up in the morning to bomb blast and this is her next phase of survival. Very intimate, she's, there's obviously a big moment happening, but she's caught all of this action, the expressions. This is definitely a real event. This is in some staged event. It's interesting, sometimes, well, this is on the AP site, so there's no reason to put the um, photographer's name, but, uh, Publications subscribe to um, news agents uh, and to uh, wire services, so they get these photographs not for free, but they can use them because they're paying for the service. And some publications use uh, put down the uh, a credit for the photographer, but others uh, choose not to. But it's kind of bad man manners in my in my thinking it's a bit like ignoring or being rude to a waitress if you find that the tip is included in the restaurant bill the third really strong AP photographer is Vadim Gerda yeah there, I've seen so many of these photographs but having this lady you know in this very nice outfit uh, pointing what looks like an AKA AK rifle, fantastic. Very simple, but very powerful. Used, yeah, also all over the place. There's also a lot of images. This was probably a well-attended photo op, but some people got images that really epitomize the, the vulnerability of the old or the children, and I, I like this one. Moving on to Reuters, this is Carlos Barria. These are refugees fleeing open and they obviously came under fire. A real good action shot. You've got lots of things going on in the background. Um, this woman cowering in the foreground, an old lady in the middle. And there's no way he had any way to know this was going to happen. So you can see it's slightly blurred. His focus probably, I think it's somewhere on infinity, I think, but, and aperture fairly wide open. So he doesn't have a big depth of field, but the image works. It doesn't matter that there's a bit of movement and a bit of, and that it's slightly off focus. Here, uh, I think this one was cropped. So this was probably the full the full image that he, he sent and then someone cropped it. Whereas, yeah, it's difficult because this is a nice action moment, but then you can't see the, um, the faces of those in the back. So that would be a picture editor's decision. Here's another one of his, also strong. 
Moving on to Agence France Press, AFP. I covered Aris Mazinis in the Orlina Carrillo discussion. Um, this is another image by an AFP photographer, Sergi Bobok. I haven't seen anything as strong as this out in the fighting arena. This is stark, clear, says, says it all. Men going off to war, men dying. I just wanted to show a few more loose images of these images are from a young guy who's actually 19 years old, Ethan S-W-O-P-E, not sure how you pronounce that. So for 19, he's got a real strong eye and he's won awards and he's, he's done exceptional. I mean, look at that. That's a strong image. That's a bit of an Alex Webb feel. Who's this? Um, Getty. This is a real action shot. Um, it tied in with that, the civilians leaving open. Just a very human image. I love the battered handbag or briefcase. It's probably overflashed for 20 years ago, but for now, um, at present, this is quite sort of a, a funky feel. I thought this was a really strong image, Maxim Daniok. That's a winner. McGrath, I think his name is. Very nice. Dark objects. There isn't one person with a light shirt. If there was, it would have spoilt it. And quite a poignant moment to end off. To a good looking couple. Lives completely altered. As of the 24th of March, 12 journalists and or, and or media workers have been killed in Ukraine. Here are some of the images. I've obviously missed a, a lot of strong images, but this is just my take on the imagery that has come out of the Ukraine war. I'd like to perhaps look at this again in a, a week or two, if the war continues. If you've found the content of this video interesting, please like and subscribe, because I'd like to grow this platform and do more of these kind of events in the future. Okay, thanks.